So my name's Rory, I head up the sales team here at Tempo. Um, I'm also joined by Ricky, who is our head of marketing here. So today we're gonna to be talking about yeah, remote, remote hiring and culture at what I'm sure we can all agree is a pretty important time for the topic. So for those of you who don't know Tempo, we're a tech-led recruitment platform and we're on a mission basically to make hiring the most exciting thing that companies do. So as you can expect, we spend a lot of time talking about things like hiring and culture and it's pretty central to what we do. If you do have any questions during the webinar, feel free to drop them in the messenger. It seems like everyone knows how it works already. And myself and Ricky will answer as many as we can, as well as we can at the end of the presentation. Great, so yeah, as I'm sure everyone is aware by now, we're living in an extremely interesting and unique time when it comes to hiring for our businesses. And I think if we can allow ourselves to, to move away from the focus on, you know, on what COVID, the bad impact has had on business and people's health, there have actually been some really exciting changes from a hiring perspective. Um, ultimately, recent events, you know, they forced us to reflect on our onboarding, our hiring process, and adapt quickly to, to our new environment, which is all really positive. You know, whilst the initial period of, of COVID was filled with uncertainty, I think it's gotten to this point now where we can't keep waiting in the sort of limbo phase we're in anymore. You know, it was certainly understandable that many people press pause on spend, on hiring, and in a lot of cases, pretty much everything else for a few months. Um, but I think now what we need to do is we need to push forward uh, if we want our businesses to survive but, but, and even to thrive during this time. Um, I think it's really important to realize that this new normal uh, could go on for a long time and, and maybe even in some ways forever. Uh, and we definitely can't wait around for things, you know, to get back to how, how they were before. So, you know, here at Tempo, we've still been hiring during this time and we've actually welcomed nine new people into the company since we started working remotely. Um, so, you know, it's been a real learning curve for us, but I think in our opinion, a really positive one. Um, and, you know, in amongst all the uncertainty, there has been some really great examples of companies who have adapted quickly. So, for example, Facebook and Twitter uh, have said that they don't want people to go back to the office for the rest of the year or even until next summer, um, you know, but instead to continue working from normal, like as normal from home. Um, Amazon have turned offices into homelessness shelters, um, not just for now, but, but for good. And, you know, co-working is starting to see an uplift in interest uh, because of the flexibility they allow. And, and I think these quick decisions, you know, they really help to create a sense of certainty amongst employees and give them, you know, the confidence that their employer, to, employer sorry, is reacting positively to, to everything that's going on. And, and they provide a really good example for, you know, what we're going to go on to discuss today. Um, so yeah, just to run through what we are going to talk about today. So we're going to take a deep dive into uh, this remote work and, and how it's impacting hiring, communication, and, and in particular culture. So with respect to remote hiring, um, you know, it shouldn't just be reactive. We need like a concrete plan. Um, communication, um, you know, responsibilities you have as an employer at this time to communicate things clearly to your new starters and employees is, is super, super important. Uh, and finally, remote culture, which is, yeah, is the big one. Um, what do you do when your actual, you know, work culture isn't your culture anymore? So, yeah, I'm going to hand over to Ricky, who, yeah, is going to run you through a, a bit about remote hiring. Thank you very much, Rory. Um, before we dive into the content, I just want to do a quick poll with all of you here um, to just get an idea of your situation and where you're currently at. Just need to see if I can figure out the technology. Um, right, so you should all be able to see the poll on your screen now, um, just asking whether or not you've been hiring throughout this period. Um, and we're getting a lot of questions coming through. Oh. Exciting. It is really exciting to watch. It is. <laughs> Just let it roll for a few more seconds. Right, that seems to be most of the people. Right, we'll stop the poll now. Okay, some quite interesting results here. I'll just share it with you so you can all see it. Um, actually, ma majority of you have been hiring throughout. And then there's a few who have completely pressed pause on hiring um, and very few have just started hiring again recently. So it looks like there's a good mix of people here, which is great to see. Um, and I feel like the content we're going to talk about today should hopefully help all of you. Um, so thanks very much for that. So um, 
Obviously, we've all been hiring remotely for a while now. So today we're not going to tell you the ins and outs of how to actually hire, but we're going to dive a little bit deeper. If you're an experienced hiring manager, you may think that you don't have to do as much prep because you've been hiring for many years. But things have really turned on its head now, so it doesn't really matter how much experience you have in this field. If you're interviewing someone, it's really key to be prepared. Um, I feel like we've all had interviews recently where the person goes frozen on the other end, or there might be a delay because of like a bad internet connection. So how do you manage that? How do you react to it? Um, do you address it? Do you laugh at it? Or do you just ignore it completely? Um, additionally, some people might feel like video calls are invading their personal space a little bit. Imagine if you're interviewing someone face to face and you said, hey, can I see a photo of your house first? That'd be really weird. But actually, that's the reality of video interviews. So we kind of step over that virtual barrier and it becomes really personal. And also, it can potentially create some bias if you step into people's homes and you can see what their living situation is. So preparation for how and whether you address these things are really key. And also in addition to this, you need to um, acknowledge the generational differences there might be, especially if you're hiring young people. Um, in fact, there was a survey conducted in April this year in the UK that shows that Gen C is actually the generation that struggles the most with remote work um, because they want to be around people because they're most likely to starting out in their career. Um, this might also have something to do with living conditions, like I talk, touched briefly on before. If they live in a shared household, it might still smell like alcohol from the weekend's party, and that's probably not the best working environment. Or someone might just live in a house where they don't have a proper workspace set up, so they're forced to work from bed. So if you're hiring this young generation, it's really important that we acknowledge some of these challenges um, that they might have with the way that we currently work. So it's really key to stay supportive and positive. There's a lot of things we can influence, but we need to be positive about the things that we can be positive about. So things about when you're interviewing people, be positive about how the team is working at the moment, how quickly people have adapted, what new initiatives you've introduced. Um, and this will really make young candidates feel much more comfortable about your company despite the current circumstance that we live in. And what's even more important to acknowledge for younger generations is how you still focus on teamwork and how this is done remotely compared to how it would be done face to face. So millennials may have paved the way for flexible working, but the NC are really bringing with them a whole new set of values and behaviors. So when you're interviewing someone, really make sure you have this kind of information upfront during the interview process. This means that you can be much more prepared to deal with some of the questions that younger candidates will have. But it also means that you can make them feel more confident about you as an employer, even though they're not able to meet you right now. Gen C is a generation that really wants employers to be authentic, and that's why they always read reviews and proactively research what it's like to work for you. There's a really nice example from a company we spoke to a few months ago. It's a company called Fit, which is an online fitness app. Um, they've experienced a huge uptake in the last few months and they've had to hire a lot of people, all of which were done remotely. They shared with us how they were quite nervous about it initially because, first of all, they weren't sure how candidates would find it, but also like as a company, how would they make sure they found the right culture fit? But Fit really choose to go in and totally embrace all of the technology that's available and make the most of it because all of the tools that we need to hire efficiently remotely, they're out there. So we just need to really own them. We also need to recognize some of the challenges that we have when we're hiring remotely. And some of those challenges, there's quite a lot, but we've outlined three of them here. Um, even though young candidates might feel insecure about entering a remote world of work, it's really, really important that you as the hiring manager overcome the challenges that you're facing when you're hiring remotely, because you really want to be the best version of yourself to candidates. First up, the Zoom fatigue is real. Um, and I'm sure you've all felt it, like I've felt it. It's, it's difficult with all of those Zoom meetings. And research shows that video meetings are more draining because you have to work a lot harder to concentrate and you have to work harder to absorb body language. But we all remember back in the day when we used to have those like two hour long face-to-face -face meetings that often could have been a 15 minute phone call. And we used to dread those things just as much. 
So really, we need to just get over this. Um, Zoom fatigue is real, but it's not necessarily worse than the normal meeting fatigue that we used to face. Um, second, um, I just always remember you're hiring a person. It's something we always focus on quite a lot when we're hiring face to face. But the candidate experience is just as important now as it was before. Um, so be real and be honest on video calls. You're a person and you're hiring a person. You're not hiring a CV. Um, so it might be remote, but just show you're not a robot and you're not hiring a robot. And lastly, it's really, really key that we forget this kind of limbo state that we're all living in. We need to stop saying when things go back to normal and when we're back in the office, we'll do this and this and this because that doesn't really matter to new starters right now. Instead, you need to bring to life what you're doing right now. So how are we communicating at the moment? What's life like working at Temper these days? And how do you stay up to date remotely and how do you check in with each other? So to sum all of this up about remote hiring is that we've all been hiring remotely for a while now. And it's really time that we stop winging it and really think about what we want to achieve from it. I quite like to think of this as a way that a life coach might do. So um, if you live in reaction, you see life happening to you and you become powerless and you might even start feeling bad for yourself. And if you live with intention, you take ownership and you embrace what's coming at you. So although this is a life coaching technique to kind of find your own happiness and find yourself, it very much applies to hiring scenarios as well. So let's not react to the questions the candidates have about working from home. And let's not react to questions about culture and values remotely. Instead, we need to show our intention, say, this is how we're doing things right now. It might not be perfect, but it's something, and we're doing X, Y, and Z to make sure that you have an awesome experience joining our company, even if it's remotely. And again, I kind of want to highlight the previous example with the Fit app. So as a company, they've started doing weekly pulse checks so they simply ask all of their employees to rate how they're doing on a scale from one to 10. And then alongside this, they have ongoing engagement surveys to so just get an understanding of how people are doing with remote work and how they're feeling overall. And it means that by doing this all the time, they can act on it straight away if something seems a bit off. And it works really well for both new and old employees. So last in this hiring piece, even if you are really skilled hiring managers, Maybe it's a good idea to consider giving yourself some training and giving your hiring manager some training. There's a lot of resources online to do this, but you could even interview each other remotely as a test to see how you actually come across. The most key thing is really to just ditch all the negative thoughts when you're talking to potential candidates. You can always talk to your family about those at the end of the day over a bottle of wine, but instead you really need to be positive you need to make a candidate as excited about joining your company as you were when you first joined it. Empathy is extremely important right now. There's a lot of uncertainty around people's future and the market has changed so much. There's too many candidates right now and there's not enough jobs. So even if you don't end up hiring them, candidates are always gonna remember this interview process and it's gonna impact how they feel about your brand. Always remember that they could be a potential customer as well. So if you have this prep covered, you can really give candidates an awesome experience remotely. So remember, stop living in this limbo thing and have a more proactive mindset. It's really time that we start showing our intention. Um, so next up, we're gonna focus on communication in a remote world. This is a huge part of the hiring process itself, but it's also really important to existing employees. So before I hand you over to Rory, I'm just gonna do another quick poll here. Um, which is just to get an understanding of how you have actually been um, sorry to get an understanding of how you've been communicating to your team um, during these times. So I hope you can all see the poll now. Um, if you can just answer like, have you sort of had a good remote working practice? Have you done anything formal to kind of set out what you expect from employees? Just wait for a few results to come in. Right, it looks like most people have voted now, so we'll end it. There's a very clear winner here. <laughs> um, so actually, if I just share results with you now, you can see that 
So 91% says that you have not formalized anything, but you have had ongoing discussions about how things are going. Um, so that's really great to hear. And I feel like that's probably what we've mostly been doing here at Tempo as well. Um, so thank you all for that. And now I'm gonna pass you over to Rory. Thank you very much, Ricky. Yeah, I think this bill on communication looks like it's going to be pretty relevant given the, uh, the poll there. So yeah, hopefully it should be useful. So I think as companies, we are and, and must be held accountable during this time. Um, you know, any decisions that, that we make now are going to massively impact, you know, company culture moving forward and, or rather, I suppose, like the decisions that, that you don't make. So as an example of what I mean, a few, a few months ago, I read an article where employees at some companies in London said that they would still they were still um, more or less forced into going into the office despite being able to work from home, uh, which to me said that ultimately you know their employers simply didn't trust them. And, and in this scenario, you have to wonder why they hired these people in the first place, as you know trust should surely be like central to your company values. So yeah, no doubt those employees will be on the move as soon as possible. Uh, I think what this demonstrates is that if you didn't act fast enough on allowing people to work from home, you know, giving them guidelines to go back to work or even communicating what you expect from people when they're working from home, there will definitely be a negative impact on employee well-being and company culture in the long run. So I think, as it sounds like it's the case, like if we haven't done that yet, it's really important that, that we communicate that well to our, our employees. Uh, ultimately, it's a super tough time to own a business right now, to work in HR or, or really anywhere else in a business. So communication is, is really key. You know, so even though we might not have been planning for remote work, like it's come as a bit of a surprise to everyone, um, we need to communicate what makes it great to people. So there are loads of benefits to working remotely, um, which have been highlighted in many case studies like throughout the years. So we've listed uh, some well-known reasons here. Like, of course, they differ from company to company. Um, but, you know, so for example, um, I read about there's a Chinese travel company called Sea Trip, uh, which has I think around 16,000 employees. Um, they split up the company so that half of them work from home and half from the office for nine months. So the results of that were that the work from home team saw a 13% performance increase, which in itself is pretty impressive. But on top of that, they had less sick days, you know, fewer breaks throughout the day. They were able to do more calls because they're in a quiet environment. Um, and ultimately they had less turnover of staff, which is, yeah, sort of what this is all about really. Um, so I suppose why are so many companies finding it so difficult right now to adapt? And as Ricky touched on earlier, I think it's in part due to yeah, new generations entering into the workforce. So to illustrate that currently more than one third of the workforce are made up of Gen Z. Um, and it's super important to bear that in mind when communicating and establishing your remote working plan. So, you know, Gen Z is a generation that are really, really keen to learn and develop. So unlike millennials who've kind of paved the way for this whole flexible work, remote working thing, I mean, obviously not because of a pandemic, but, but yeah, uh, Gen Z, you know, they really want to build relationships, challenge themselves and ultimately learn and they need people around them to do so. And I think like weirdly enough, you know, nearly all managers, um, believe that Gen Z kind of prefer to communicate via chat or online. Um, so that's a real misconception and it's really another proof point for, you know, showing the importance of communicating. So yeah, I guess my message is like communicate, 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 you know, so when you're hiring someone new, it's so, so key to make sure they understand how you communicate like on a daily basis. So simple stuff like whether you use Slack for emails in your day-to-day -day stuff, sorry, Slack or emails, beg your pardon, for day-to-day -day stuff. Uh, do you have daily calls? Who's their point of contact for various things? And just like anything else that might benefit them. Um, you know, when a new starter joins an office, it's really easy to pick this stuff up because it's around you all the time. But when you're working remotely, it really needs to be clarified. Um, and actually, I think, you know, this should be communicated to the current team sort of now that you're all suddenly remote not just the new hires you know like at the end of the day it's so important that everybody's on the same page when it comes to this stuff so you know with respect to communication obviously talked about it a lot but the, the data really speaks for itself 
communication is like 100% as important for, for new hires as it is for existing employees. And that's why communication is such a big part of everything, you know, from hiring to onboarding all the way through to employee retention. Um, like it is really hard to get 100% right and we've all been like thrown into this situation. So I guess the big question here yeah, is like, where do you start when, when communicating this stuff? You know, for me, it all starts by simply like asking, you know, the point of these questions you can see is, is not always to provide the best and perfect solution, but to make sure people are heard, you know, feel valued and ultimately they feel listened to. So, you know, there's no one size fits all policy to this. So things like town halls, one-to-ones, mentoring, surveys, emails, you know, and anything else really that you can think of are like hugely important. Um, it's also really important to consider the role of leaders within the business and how you as an HR manager can support them, but also their direct reports as well. So a really good example of this listening communicating piece is I recently spoke to a payments company called ShieldPay and just love some of their new initiatives. So after they started to work from home, they like really took the time to, to listen to what their employees wanted and indeed needed. Um, and as a result, they've given everyone unlimited holiday um, because I mean, A, they want to show people that they really trust them to do their jobs at whatever time they need. Um, but B, also, you know, as Ricky mentioned, people are working from their bedrooms and, you know, round crap kitchen tables. So to give them a bit more freedom as well. Um, and this was a part they were going to continue like when they return to the office as well, because they've had a really good response in terms of productivity. Alongside that as well, they've also introduced one mandatory health day every month. So people take a day off purely for mental health and don't have to provide a reason, um, but it's not part of their holiday allowance. So it doesn't you know, add to their anxiety about perhaps taking too much time off, et cetera. Um, and it's a really great way, I felt anyway, to make sure employees are happy, motivated, and ultimately feel listened to. Um, and yeah, I think it's just um, a really cool example of a company speaking and listening to their employees and ultimately understanding how best to facilitate work in this kind of new situation we find ourselves in. So why do we need an office, I suppose? So working from home clearly has its benefits that we've touched on already. But, you know, the single most important reason why people are struggling at the moment is because of bad communication, which ultimately leads into, you know, a lack of company culture. So like the whole thing is completely connected. You know, ultimately people like having things like water cooler chats, you know, making a cup of tea in the busy office or going for a walk at lunchtime, whatever it might be. Um, you know, just to demonstrate that, Facebook said half of its employees by 2030 are gonna be working from home. But Mark Zuckerberg has come out and said that only one in five are actually enthusiastic about doing so. So we need to find a way to replicate all those things that people like in a remote world. Um, you know, so lack of culture, especially remotely, can have a huge impact on negative impact even on both productivity and well-being. So, you know, people feel lonely if all they hear all day is the kettle in the kitchen. And that's not going to change even if you do communicate well. So. In light of this, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to talk a little bit about company culture. So, you know, there's no doubt like the importance of communication. And I think that leads us nicely into the culture piece, just because they are so inextricably linked and, and you can't have one without the other. So, you know, for me, culture is not just about ping pong tables or having beer in the fridge, like even though those things are great. Um, and even if it was, you know, we can't do that now anyway, because we're all working remotely. So I guess the question is, how do you harness your culture remotely? And more importantly, how do you make new hires feel a part of that remote culture? So yeah, Ricky's gonna chat a little bit about that. Thank you very much, Rory. Um, I feel like first of all, it's one of those things we just need to put it out there. Like remote culture is tricky. I feel like just even looking at the statement on the screen right now, that's kind of confusing to read, just like the scenario is. Um, a while ago, we spoke to Transfigo, and they mentioned how for them, it had been a fairly nice transition. Um, they said, oh, we've simply moved our Friday drinks to happen online instead, and we've introduced virtual dog meetups, and they just felt really positive about the whole thing, and it was really uplifting to see. But it's because they've been communicating well throughout this experience, which Roy has obviously just highlighted the importance of. So I feel like if companies are finding this hard to do, 
it's most likely because they still have some work to do in terms of actually understanding and defining their culture. And then further on to that, how this culture might translate into remote work. So as we mentioned before, the Zoom fatigue is real. Um, and also on top of that, now that lockdown restrictions have been eased, it feels like the era of Zoom quizzes have kind of come and gone now, and we'll have a bit of more of a social life again. So what is culture actually now, and how do we maintain, maintain it, but also how do we share it with new people on the team when we're all remotely? Again, before I dive into this, I just want to highlight Gen C as an example. Um, we mentioned before that Gen C is probably the generation that is struggling the most um, with remote work because they feel disconnected. So culture is really, really important. So how do we do remote culture? I came across this really nice case study from Sapia that I would like to share. Um, for those of you who don't know Sapia, it's a tech company that connects different online apps with each other um, for easy automation across different platforms. So for Sapia, culture is about how you work. And they say everyone that works at Sapia has bought into the belief that you come to work for the work, not for the ping pong. Most of your time at work is going to be work. So the work has to be rewarding by itself. So what do they actually mean by that? Um, there's a few examples. One of them would be, how do we talk to customers? So is speed more important than quality? Do you want to deliver the best at the market or do you want to deliver the fastest? Um, how do we communicate with each other? And this very much leads back to the communication piece, but do you call each other? Is it an email thing or is it a quick chat conversation? And also how much work do we actually do on a weekly basis? Do we work 40 hours or do we work 60 hours or 80 hours? This has a huge impact on the team dynamic and then ultimately on your culture. So all of these things are actually your culture. If you can really print it into people's minds that this is how we work, this is how we communicate and also how we sort of show ourselves to customers. Um, but of course, employees want something to connect with outside of just work itself. So we've created these five steps to a great remote working culture, which I'll talk you through now. Um, so first up, you need to really define your values. This is so important. And it's not just because of remote work that this is important. It's something you should really do anyway. It's really important for employees to know what you stand for, um, but it's also really great to display on your website and in job descriptions for potential new hires. So just for a few examples of how that might, might translate into remote culture. So if you have a value that says, we trust each other, remotely that might mean, we're not gonna check what time you start work, when you clog in and when you clog out again at the end of the day. And you might have a value that says, we strive to be a value. And remotely that means, okay, I'm gonna take initiative to ask others outside of my immediate team if I can help with anything they're working on. So you really sort of keep pushing yourself to live up to the values that you've set internally. So this helps new employees, but it also really helps existing employees because it makes them understand how they're meant to work. And again, if you look back at the Savior case study I just shared, this is what they've done and they've really built out their remote working culture because everyone buys into the fact that this is how we work throughout and then everyone can kind of share that nicely with each other. Secondly, um, I would really encourage you to take your culture public, share with others what you're doing that makes you so great. So when you're remote, write some blogs, feature your employees on your social media channels and even invite people from the outside to join you. So as an example here at Tempo, we've been hosting a few remote bingo quizzes and we just invited our community of candidates to join in alongside the Tempo team. And it was just a really fun way to kind of connect with everyone where it's not related to our product and what we do, but we could all just have a drink on a Friday afternoon together. Next up, you really need to employ, welcome new employees to everyone. And if you've been hiring for many years, you might think, yeah, obviously this is quite straightforward. But actually, it's quite different now because before you could just walk around the office and be like, hey, this is marketing, this is sales and meet people face to face. But when new people start remotely, you really need to take initiative to set, set up calls for intros with everyone like throughout the first week or the first three days, however you want to do it. Um, give them a buddy maybe so they have someone they can lean on for the first, um, for the first month or so. 
Notion is a really great tool as well because then you can share internal docs. I'm just stealing what Ben just said in the chat here in case anyone is looking at that. Um, but just make sure they really know who their point of contact is for everything that's going on. So thinking back to the example I gave later from the Fit app, they have sent, um, set up a lot of meetings throughout the week. So instead of just having a all hands Monday meeting, they do it three times a week and then people can just sort of check in if they want, see what other people are doing and just kind of dial into other people's team meetings and get an update on what other people are doing. Another way to do it is if you have an internal newsletter, it's a really great way to keep everyone updated on what's going on across the teams and introduce new starters. And I would also really recommend to make sure you don't always talk about work, but kind of get to know people on a personal basis. Next up, you need to set expectations on how you communicate. Um, this can be in your own immediate team, but also with other teams and as a company with big announcements. How do you check in with each other? Do you email each other? Do you use Slack? Do you call each other? How often? When are you expected to start and finish work? These are all of the things that when you join a new company in an office, you sort of catch on to that slowly, but it really varies greatly from company to company. So when you go remote, it might change what you actually do because you might have a different approach than what you used to have in the office. And lastly, I think one of the tricky things is that a lot of us have a culture that was built in the office and for the office, where it's a lot about going for a drink after work. So you really want to make sure that there's time and space for those water cooler chats and those fun things. So um, create a Slack channel that's just for fun. Um, have a place where everyone can just share whatever they're thinking about. You can use tools like Donut, which is an app you can connect to Slack that just randomly pairs two members of the team to have a call together at some point. So you can really take time to get to know people. Um, another great tip is to communicate through GIFs and emojis. Re research shows that it actually adds a lot of emotional value to conversations if you do that. Um, here at Tempo, a quite fun example is during the early days of lockdown, we kind of started to share pictures of our lunches in Slack. And before we knew it, everyone was rating each other's lunch between one and 10. And we had some really grim ones come out of it, but it was really fun. And everyone was almost looking forward to lunch on a daily basis because it reminded us of being back in the office and being together and commenting on how we're, what we're eating and how we're eating it. Um, but it also means that we get to know each other on a slightly different level. It's a good way to get people engaged. Um, so definitely have a think about these five things and how you can do that for yourself. And maybe you've thought about it already, but then write it down, communicate it to your employees. So that's culture in a remote world. Um, a, really, a little bit really goes a long way. So you wanna make sure everyone's happy and comfortable and know what is expected of them. Now I'm gonna hand you back over to Roy and he's gonna just give a quick sum of what we've discussed today. And then if you have any questions, please feel free to bring those forward as well. Cool, thank you, Ricky. So yeah, just gonna run through what we've talked about today really and yeah, key takeaways. So I think the first thing, you know, with remote hiring, it should be reactive. Um, you know, we really need to put a concrete plan in place about how we're going to approach it in this new sort of hiring landscape, if you like. Um, you know, even the most skilled hiring managers, people have been doing it for ages, are fundamentally they're treading in like completely new waters now. And we'll need to definitely, we'll need to prep differently um, and much more thoroughly, thoroughly to how they were before. Um, I think it's also important, you know, to be prepared and be positive and to show people what you're doing like right now. So don't focus on saying things like when we go back to normal or when we were in the office, it's really important to, yeah, depict what it's like at the moment to work at, at your company. Um, also, you know, acknowledge generational differences. Gen Z, for example, want to be connected. Uh, it's important to think about how you do that at your company, but also beyond Gen Z, you know, everyone is different and taking them into consideration is going to help so, so much. So with respect to communication, um, it is absolutely key. Um, it's really, really important to consider, you know, what new responsibilities you have as an employer. Some things that used to be really obvious within your company culture and rules may no longer be so. 
So it's really, really important to communicate what is expected of your employees so that they have a fully un full understanding. Most importantly, you know, ask people how they're doing. It it's okay not to get all this stuff right first time, but make sure that, that you listen to, listen to people and reflect on that. And then with culture, you know, establishing a remote culture is absolutely essential. But, you know, the question is, as I mentioned earlier, what do you do when your, your culture has to completely change because the environment's completely changed? In many ways, you know, culture isn't about the perks. It's about the company values and how you work and what you believe in as a company. Um, that said, I think it's really important nowadays when we don't have that personal interaction to, to make sure that we make time for fun, like non-work chats. So we've listed a few already, but whether it's Slack, Donut, Zoom, you know, our bingo or transfer goes dog meetups, which I'd actually love to go to, um, or just anything else you can think of just to keep people engaged and ultimately keep people enjoying work. Um, you know, there's so many options out there and it won't suit, each one won't suit everyone, but uh, it's important to incorporate them into your work, remote working culture, definitely. So I think, yeah, to summarize, it's fair to say that we're not going to be going back to how things used to be anytime soon, or in some respects, maybe ever. You know, COVID's forced us to look into our processes and, and how we can help improve them. Uh, and maybe that's a change for the better. You know, I think it's definitely made our team here, for example, work more efficiently. And I think we've learned loads from the experience. Um, I think as hiring managers more broadly, we can reach candidates from all over the world, you know, opening up demographics and characteristics that we wouldn't normally have access to. And the borders have really been removed. And, you know, many companies are gonna go on hiring remotely indefinitely. And I think as that becomes the norm, everything we discussed today just becomes so much more important and relevant. Um, I think, you know, this is a change that probably would have happened anyway. I think remote working probably would have come in in the next five, 10, maybe 20 years, who knows? Um, but COVID has definitely pushed that change to, to happen a bit sooner. But I think sometimes we need to be forced into these new situations to kind of deal with them and tackle them head on. And yeah, I think, look how well everyone's done so far and I think everyone's adjusted really, really well. Cool, so I think at this stage, yeah, we've got some time for a few questions, if anyone has any in which case you can pop them in the, the Zoom webinar. And if you can make them available to panelists and um, to uh, attendees as well, that would be great. We had one question come in from Laura directly. Um, Laura's asking, if you can do one single thing tomorrow to improve remote work, what would that one thing be? Um, I think that's a really great question because obviously it can be quite a lot to take in to go and completely redo your entire onboarding process and hiring process and everything you do. So um, I would say just really focus on your values, go and define them and figure out what do we actually stand for as a company? How do we want people to work? And how does that then translate into remote work? If you go onto our website, we have done a few recent blogs where we've been interviewing uh, some of the companies we've mentioned today. So there's um, Butternut Box, Shield Pay, TransferGo, Fit, um, a few more companies um, additionally to that. And you can just go and read about how they're doing this. So yeah, go to our blog and, and read about that as a bit of inspiration. Cool, we've had a question from Chris as well. So how, how do you convince your founders that having a remote policy post COVID is a necessity? Yeah, really good question. I think in my opinion, most founders make their decisions based on a employee well-being, but also company performance as well. So I think taking this as an opportunity to demonstrate how well you can work remotely and how you can get your work done, whether it's at a coffee shop or in the office or like on a holiday or whatever it might be. If you do that, A, yourself, but B, as a team, that will go a long way to... Um, to helping convey that this is something that, that can actually be really beneficial. Yeah, and I think in addition to that, if you're gonna attract new people to come and work for you, if you're gonna be a company next year that say, oh, we don't allow any remote working, I feel like you're gonna put yourself at a huge disadvantage straight up. Um, people are gonna expect this flexibility going forward. People have been expecting this for a few years already, but if you, 
after all of this still don't allow people to work from home, you're not going to get good candidates come in. They're going to go elsewhere where they're kind of trusted to, to work mm -hmm. as they, as they can. Yeah. And, and I think it goes back to the communication piece as well. Like talk about it, whether or not you can talk to your founders themselves or whether there's someone else within the business who's responsible for this sort of thing, just communicate and, and convey that it's something that you and the rest of the team want and, and start a conversation about it. I would say, hope that helps. We have one more question just came in from Duncan. Um, what are easy ways to make social time when your team is always very busy? We tried to start a coffee break, but it never got going. This is quite interesting actually, because I feel like we're all very busy and when you're remote, it's, it's difficult to kind of balance like what is working and what is actually home time. And I feel like we're probably all struggling with taking breaks and making sure you have time for that. Um, I feel like you need to enforce it a little bit. Um, say, you know what, Friday afternoon, 4 p.m., there's going to be a call where everyone can join in and we're going to do a quiz or a game or we can just sort of say hi and give each other a quick update, like town hall style. Or you can even say the alternative, if you don't want to do this, is shut your laptop and go for a walk, but don't work during this time. So just set really clear rules that say right now is time for you and that's what you need to, to do, whether you want to do it with just your immediate team or the entire team, or what might happen in that sense. Yeah, and I, and I think also, just from my personal experience, so within the sales team here at Tempo, I think since we've been working remotely, there's a greater emphasis at the beginning. So we have three uh, meetings a week as a team. And I think when we were in the office, it's like sit down, it's like, right, like get down to the point of the meeting because obviously we talk whenever. I think now like I try and get a bigger kind of emphasis on just taking like five, 10 minutes at the beginning of the meeting to check how everyone's doing and like talk about your weekends and just make sure that you're still having those, you know, very important conversations. Um, it's not perfect, but I find that's a good way at least to bring some sort of social kind of human interaction into the process as well. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Cool. Um, Oh, we got okay. In now. From Liz, <laughs> uh, we, we have a mandatory team meeting on Fridays for thirty minutes that consists of sharing knowledge along with an activity. Plus, we have oh, more of an answer. Yeah, Plus we have, really sorry, Liz, I read you read it as a question. Um, yeah, those all sound really great. Um, we have no plan calls on Wednesdays to break up the week. Um, that's really nice. Um, the idea of kind of that Zoom fatigue that we talked about. Um, trying to book everything in on days um away from like a wednesday or something um i don't actually do that but yeah i really like that idea. Really idea yeah thank you for sharing thank you all very much for listening in today um please do share your takeaways with us if you want to like share them on linkedin and tag us in it, it would be really great if we can kind of get a conversation going about what we spoke about today so we can just get everyone's thoughts on the topic so um, please share your takeaways with us. And if you have any other questions, our details are on the screen. So we're always happy to chat. And otherwise, we'll um, have another webinar soon, hopefully. <laughs> cool. Thank you for listening, everyone. Thank you all.